and the House for this opportunity again to uh, reply and uh, to reiterate. We just need to let the panel understand that we still stand by exactly our submission in the first place and a little, little bit, and uh, we may add to that that uh, we carry the mandate and the direction of our membership and the South African workforce. What we contribute ensures that the economy works. All we request is for the operators to act responsible and accountable and not like what's happened in the past in a world where the bottom line is all that matters. We cannot change the past, but we can assist in what happens in the future. Just please give us the opportunity on the way forward to be a proactive stakeholder in this process. We need to stress the point that labor is normally losers in technology advancement. Skills development should be a major criteria here. Every operator shows on their presentation that there's an opportunity for job creation. We just need them to define exactly the finer elements of these allegations and the time frames of this. And we just need to reiterate the nine points that we had on our submission. Um, I'll just draw a few of them out there as regulation should take account of the interests of those who work in the interest in the industry and need to work with trade unions to secure skills and training at the highest levels and promote decent labor standards and practices throughout the ITC industry. It should support the delivery of the strategic needs of the South African public as a whole. The regulation should be less telecommunications sector specific and more generic with more reliance on the Competition Act and move towards a strategic model that promotes investment, innovation and development. It should be less tactical, intrusive, and more strategic and enabling. It should be more humanistic, less mechanistic. It should take account the interest of those who work in the industry and not the exclusive in the, uh, interest of the business. We need to look at interest instead of choice. On our conclusion, on our submission, I just need to reiterate as well, above all, we need ICASA to prove, provide a clear vision on how electronic communication regula regulation will evolve so that it becomes less intrusive and tactical, more predictable and strategic and delivers to, in South Africa, with their ge geographic, social and economical location. Now, we also need to remind the House and the panel that uh, we are a union that is affiliated to a federation in this country, the Federation of Unions of South Africa. And I think it's quite a big chunk of the South African workforce that's affiliated to them. And I think that we do have an interest, we, we, we have a quite big interest in any decision that's made that, that impacts on the workforce. So we clearly beg of you just to, to take cognizance of this on any decision that we make. We could understand there will be the job losses and um, we could uh, maybe just remind the House, although everyone knows that, that for the period of 2006 to 2011, everyone is uh, referring to BT, British Telecom. We were referring to them previously as well. But in that time frame of 2006 to 2011, we've seen 20,000 job losses over a five-year period. Now, if we take those 20,000 job losses, that's 20,000 employees. Let's say that is 50,000 people that hasn't got an income. That's a 20,000 with the, with the households. And in the informal sector, of that 20,000, there was, I surmise and project about maybe 15,000 people that was employed by them, cleaning houses, maids, gardeners, the, 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 the rippling inf impact on 20,000 jobs. Now, this is a projection of a possible scenario that would happen in South Africa if we don't see this through in a responsible and accountable manner. You want anything to add? Thank you. Thank you, SSCU. Do we have any questions from the floor? <coughs> 